What's up guys? Welcome back for another video. Do you know what has no arms, legs, eyes and also five odds? I'm Alessandro from Spicy Moustache and in today's video we're gonna talk about worms. Their benefit in the garden and how to make your own worm composter at home. Even if you don't have a garden but you just want to recycle whatever kitchen scraps you got for friends and family to give them some nice compost. A warm compost bin, it's anti-smell, space saving and a great way to recycle your kitchen scraps. The final product that you're gonna extract out of your compost bin, it's also called black gold due to the high nutrient content of this amazing product. What you get at the end after the worms process the food, it's simply Worms poop. It doesn't sound really appealing, but I assure you that your garden will just love it. The worms that you're gonna use are called red wigglers. It's the best variety of worms for worm composters. They can eat their body weight in food every single day. Despite the myth of like splitting the worm in two and it can still survive, this is partially true but only the part with the head will survive, the other part will gradually die. But let's go straight to the garden so I can show you how to create your own warm composter in 5 minutes. The first thing that I would mention about your warm composter is to create some holes at the top of your composter in order to have enough air circulation for the worms to survive. You don't need any hole at the bottom for the drainage as you are in total control of the moisture inside their composter. Also, I saw a lot of people making holes at the bottom to harvest the liquid that comes out of the composter. That liquid, it's absolutely no good for your plants as it's an anaerobic discard and it shouldn't be used for your garden. You can do this warm composter in any sort of climate. The main thing is that you keep a temperature between 10 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. The reason why you should always stay between these two temperatures it's because below 10 degrees they slow down the digestion process and above 30 degrees they start to slow down processing food and digest it. Another important factor is you should never keep your composter under direct sunlight. The reason is that worms don't like light so exposing them to direct sunlight will probably kill them or stun them. When you feed your worms, don't ever put too much food or eventually it will rot and a good composter should never smell bad and you could also keep it inside your place, inside your flat. Usually when I feed them, I check in about a week how we're getting on with the food, with the processing of the food. If after a week time the food is still there, it means you should from the next time on give them less food. If after a week it's completely gone, it means you can add more food from the next time on but you will find your balance the more you do this the more you try to feed them week after week start from your coca coil block place it in a bucket Put some water over it and gradually it will absorb the water and turn into a shredded coir. In the meantime, grab some potting soil, don't use clay soil. You can also grab some from your garden as it helps the worms to digest what they eat. Mix in your pre-soaked coir block. I don't really measure quantities but I tend to do the same ratio for every material. Mix in your shredded paper, fold some paper in itself and cut it, or use a shredder. I also use some anti-acid lime mix that prevents smells, flies and white worms and it contains grit for worms digestion. Once you've mixed all your, your substrate for your worm composter, 
All you need to do is to add your kitchen scraps and your worms. Dig a small hole in order to fit your kitchen scraps. Start with a small handful of kitchen scraps. Add your worms and keep the substrate moist but not completely soaked. When you harvest your compost, just make sure to separate your worms from the composted waste. In conclusion, I would say that you can make your own worm composter based on your needs. So it really depends on the size of your garden, the area that you need to cover with your compost and so on. So if you've got any question, you can just leave it in the comment and I'm gonna reply to you as soon as possible. So I'll see you next week for another video about gardening or healthy life on Friday at 12. See ya!